Uh, good morning and welcome to the art club. So I'm going to talk about the SG jobs package, R package, um, which is really like a, a helper R package I made for creating um, bash uh, scripts um, and other things related to um, Sun Grid Engine or um, Son of Grid Engine, which is the um, the queue management system that JHPC uses, which is our uh, high performance computing environment. Well, <clears throat> to, um, to get started, like really today, I'm gonna talk about two, um, two functions here. Um, I wanna talk about the job single function um and that's um that's one i think a few of you are using right and it's one that you could also use for array jobs but then the more advanced function uh that um for example i taught um samia um, how to use is the job loop function um and i think this job loop function could also help for example ab abby sorry um on one of on one of the projects she's working on and it, it could be something that um, might be helpful in some situations. Um, so um, the job single one um, over here um, has quite a bit of parameters if you look at it, but that's because it, it can help you uh, set like most of the main parameters that you would, you would actually set. Um, <clears throat> when you create a bash script for um, um, for JHPC. Um, and so the main parameter here is a name, um, which will be the name of the script that you use. Um, it would also internally be used as the name of the job when you submit it to JHPC. Um, I should probably change this create shell um, argument to true uh, because we're always, uh, um, one second, just more person, uh, Nick joined us. Um, let me change the camera. Can you hear us? Yeah. Right. Cool. Uh, <laughs> get someone move the camera. Okay. Um. All right. Um. All right. Um. So. Um, right. So, um, this create shell um, actually creates a, a, a file on disk um, with the contents of what you would need for your um, bash script. Um, if you don't use it, like if you, if you, uh, yeah, if you don't specify it, it will like simply print the script on your um, R terminal, which maybe doesn't make a lot of sense because then you would need to copy paste it anyways. Um, but this is kind of the output of what you will get, right? You'll get a, a file that, you know, is a bash script uh, where there's a few JHPC options, which are the ones that start with a pound dollar sign symbol at the beginning of the line. So these lines over here. Um, then whatever name you give to the bash script, that's the name that's used for the dash n option, which is the name of the job, but also the name that is used for the log files. Um, um, next, um, mm -hmm. um, next, there's a few more options in terms of like, what is the maximum file size you want? 
um, which the default here I have is 100 gigabytes. Um, if you exceed that, then like um, Sun Up Green Engine will will kill your job. Then you can also set the memory. Um, and so these two numbers, um, uh, mem free and HP mem, are then um, <clears throat> are the settings for for specifying how much memory you want. We know uh, nowadays we normally set them to the same number. Um, um, and so that will be one option there. And so you might be, I mean, you might be quite familiar with uh, with Sun Up Grid Engine and like, um, you know, writing these few lines might be easier for you than actually using the R package. But I I found it useful to do this because not only do I want these set of lines, which are like absolutely necessary for running the job, uh, but I also want to include a bit of information on my log uh, files when I actually submit my job. And that is this next section um, where like, I want to know when the job started. So I use the um, bash command called date. But then I also want to know who actually ran the job. What was the ID? This will be a number. So this will be like a six or seven maybe eight digit number, um, the name of the job, query ran, which is the host name. So this could be like compute like 096, for example. Um, um, and that information can be useful when you start to run a lot of jobs, because maybe some of them are not working in one, um, um, in one compute node, right? Like, like a, a computer node could be kind of failing, uh, or maybe it's like an older computer node. Um, and so this is how you can keep track a bit of that. Um, otherwise, it becomes a bit hard to, to know all of it. Um, and in the case of running an array job, um, then uh, you'll want to know what was the task ID for that. Um, after all of that information, then I also want to know, well, by default, I want to load like R. Um, um, it used to be that it was always loaded by default, but like at some point when they updated JHPC to a newer uh, operating system, they, they dropped that. So um, a lot of the times we're running R jobs. And, um, um, and you could even modify this and say like, um, Say like, hey, like I want to run. Um, my annotations are clean. Here, all drawings. Yep. Looks like I froze. Hello. Mm. Oh, I can still see you. Yeah, do right. for me. Oh, all right. I don't know why the annotations are not clearing and like the, our video feed of each of you is also not, not updated. Anyways, um, and I can't annotate now. Okay, let me stop sharing. Share again. All right. Um, okay, so what I was saying is like you might want to modify this and specify exactly what is the R version you want to run. So like, for example, right now it would be 4.1.x. Um, in about a month or so, maybe two, it might be 4.2. Um, so you could specify that. You want to make sure that your, your script always runs with a particular R version. Um, and then uh, for reproducibility, I want to see the whole list of modules that were loaded. And this can help diagnose some more complicated problems. Um, 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 especially if you have modified your bash rc file, which is your configuration file at GHPC, and maybe load other modules that could be created in a conflict. Um, so this has happened in the past. Um, then once the job is done, I just want to know, you know the date of it. Um, 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 and so this could be useful. You just want to you know, check the date when it started and compare that with the date where it ended. 
um, and say like, hey, like how long did it take to run type of thing. Um, you want that information. Now, the part that you're always going to change is this middle part of like um, running whatever you want to run, right? So in this particular example, okay, I'm just saying like, you know, use R script and print the repository information, right? But you could be like R script space and a file name like, like script. Uh, I should bring a mouse the next time I do this script.r, right? Um, or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, all right. Um, um, so that is uh, like the default of it. You could change parameters like the number of cores or, or the queue name. And so that will like automatically update like parts of the, um, um, parts of the configuration of your bash script, right? Um, so you, that will add the queue where or you, or you need to specify. It. Um, and also uh, you're saying like you want 10 cores, it'll add a like P local 10 line, um, uh, which could be uh, you know, what you need, right? Um, now, um, what if you want to do it in a array job, which I think KJ was mentioning earlier. And so at that point, um, you might want to specify the task number parameter, and that will add the dash T and actually also the, the dash TC options. Um, Zoom is not liking me today. Stop annotating for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so we'll add those two options, the dash T and dash TC. And so what happens when you're using the dash T, right? Um, you need to specify a range or an actual number. Um, so the way you specify a range is with the dash. Um, and so here, like the one dash 20 means like we want to start from one, go to two, go to three, et cetera, up to 20. Um, there's another syntax, I think, for saying like, maybe you want to go from like one to five by two increments. So that would be like one, three, and five. Um, so there's a bit of a syntax for that. Um, so that is the number of tasks that you want. Um, and when you run things with a lot of tasks, maybe occasionally one of them could fail. So um, this R package actually has ways of like saying like, hey, run these particular shell scripts, but then running for this set of tasks that failed, um, which is um, you know, a bit more um, advanced if you run into that scenario. Um, um, now the dash TC option, that is the number of concurrent tasks, which um, they took the initials, but reversed them in order to make it, I guess, task concurrent. Um, and so these are like how many of your tasks do you want to be running at the same time? And this can be useful if let's say, I don't know, a thousand tasks that you want to run, but you don't want to exhaust all your um, allotment at JSPC, right? So maybe you're allowed to run like 200 tasks simultaneously. And, um, so because you have a thousand, maybe you say like, hey, I only want to run a hundred of them concurrently. That way I have a hundred um, uh, slots left in case I need to run something else, right? Because maybe your job is going to be running for two weeks and you want to be able to do other things at GHPC, right? In the meantime. Um, and so that's like what changes from the R side, uh, sorry, from the bash, uh, bash side. Now, at the very top here, I linked to a blog post from my friend, John Michelle, uh, where, where he explains um, array jobs. And in particular, he mentions this idea that like, um, you could have a grid, um, so like a data frame of different parameter options. So in this case, he has 18 unique parameter options. And so you could run an array job of, of from one to 18 
And now, how do you know from R, which is the um, uh, task number that you're working on? Well, when you, when you are running an array job, if I go back here, when you're running an array job, this environment variable called SGE task ID gets created automatically by SunGrid Engine. And so you can read it into R um, using the function sys get environment variable, right? Get env. Um, and so this is how you can get that task ID. Now, by default, um, an environment variable is read as a character um, in R. Uh, so then you need to cast it into a number with as.numeric or as.integer if you actually want to get that like task ID as a number. And so here is yeah, the data frame called scenarios, which is the one that has the 18 rows over here, right? Um, he then simply subsets it um, to the row that you're interested in. And then at that, at that point, you can use, okay, that variable for whatever you need, right? Um, 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 cool. Um, <clears throat> so that is, <clears throat> That can be quite useful if you're running the same thing for a bunch of, uh, of numbers. So let me show you an actual real example. Um, so on the right side, we have this bash script. And here we were like saying like, oh, let's run um, an algorithm called base base for um, clustering. Um, and we want to run it actually, we don't even want to start with one. So we set the minimum task ID here to four. Uh, so we're running from four to 15. And you'll notice that like, we're simply running this particular R script called base base K grid, right? Um, so the rest of it was created by SG jobs. Um, 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 but now on the left, you can notice on line number four, this is where we're saying like, okay, let's get that task environment variable um, SG task ID, uh, convert it to a number. And now that we have it, um, we call it K. Later on, we can specify, for example, on this spatial cluster function, and then say like, okay, like that's where we will use our K, right? Um, um, and now if you do this, just remember that when you save your output, you can reuse the same name, right? Uh, um, Otherwise, you're just simply going to overwrite that output. And so here, like in our case, we, in line 17, we create a little variable name where we combine it with our K. And that's a variable name, this base space name that is used for, in this case, exporting some results um, and saving them for later. Um, all right. Now, one extra thing you might notice on the right is that, uh, um, one point when you make an array job, um, the SGE jobs package is going to modify the, the name of your log file. Um, and notice how it uses this environment variable called task underscore ID, which is not the same as SGE task ID in name, but in, in content it is. And it exists at different times, in, um, at different points in time. So the task ID over here on the top exists when you submit the job. Um, and when it's initially like executed, but then like when it's actually running, the task ID environment variable doesn't actually exist. So you, you couldn't just do like on your R script, like um, uh, get the environment variable called task underscore ID because it doesn't exist. Um, so it, it doesn't get exported, I guess, too. Um, and so that's why, um, that's why there's two, this slightly, I mean, they're directly related, but like they have different names. Um, and so this will help you create like a single, um, um, a single um, a log file for every job. Now, um, that, that's like array jobs and the basics of SGE jobs. However, it can get a bit more complicated once you learn about the hold jade ID uh, option on SunGrid Engine. So what is this 
like long option. Um, I mean, it's, here's the word hold, and then JID is an acronym for job ID. Um, um, job ID. Um, and so, how do you get that job ID? Well, there's two ways you can get it, right? One way is if you submit an actual script, right? Um, and then uh, run QStat. So for example, I'm gonna log into JHPC. Um, um, you submit a job and you QStat. This first column over here is called job ID and it has this number. Um, and so you could actually say like, hey, I wanna run a second job after it, after like job number 9135144 ends, right? Um, and so this is a way for you to specify sequential jobs. Now, I never actually use the numbers because like, um, I mean, it's a bit painful to look them up and all of that, to always change your code that way. But the, the nice thing about whole Jade ID is that you can specify a job name. And so we go back to over here, this dash n option specifies the job name. So if you, if you queue something to a particular job name, right, it's equivalent of saying like, fine, look at QStat. Um, uh, here I'm gonna type QM so we can see the actual name of the job. Uh, well, no, sorry, here's this name column. It's just showing me the beginning of the name. It's actually a longer name in this case. Um, but well, um, it's basically the equivalent of saying like, run QStat, find the job ID from the job that has this very specific name. If it exists, wait for it to run, right? Um, all right, so, um, let me show you an actual example of how we're using this. Um, all right. So on the left, I have a script from my directory here called 07 spot QC. And the name of it is QC underscore metrics underscore and, and underscore segmentation. On the right, notice how on line 25, I'm using that whole Jade ID option. And so the script on the right, if I submit with QSub, the one on the left first, and then I QSub, the one on the right secondly, uh, the one on the, on, the, um, on the right will only execute once the one on the left finishes. And so this is a bit of a, a simple way of making a little pipeline, right? Um, we actually took this a bit to an extreme. Uh, when we made our RNA processing pipeline, it became a bit complicated. And then at that point, like using something like Nextflow became a lot um, um, better um, because it has a lot more features than, than, than what you have here with just the uh, uh, whole Jade ID, right? But if you just want to specify like one or two scripts, right, um, and how they're linked to each other, this could be great. Um, and it can help you save time, right? Because maybe you're like, I don't know, maybe it's like 5 p.m. I submitted the QC metrics and segmentation, and I know it's gonna take like five hours to run uh, or something like that. Um, and then I don't wanna have to log in in the computer at like 10 p.m. to then submit the job on the right, right? And have them run one after the other. Now, <clears throat> um, um, I'm sure showing you this one, right? So this is where, you have that whole data ID, QC metrics and cementation. Um, so that's how um, the whole data ID option works. And uh, I'll explain now the more um, the more advanced function job underscore loop. So job underscore loop. Um, the idea of it is, hey, maybe there's something you want to loop through. Um, 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 and you can loop through things as an array job, right? Um, 
but maybe you, there are situations where you might want to look through something, but also run an array job while you're looking through it. And so you could say like, uh, you could say like, okay, wait, well, maybe that's just this scenario situation, or like, let's say I have two of these tables, right? And you can combine them into a very long table that has 36 rows and simply run your array job over 36, right? So that could be one option um, to do it, um, like a single array job that is pretty long, right? Um, or you're just, just adding a column here to your scenarios and repeating like all the information inside of it. Um, so that's one option. But another option is um, with this job loop function where um, you provide here a list um, object in R um, where like each of the elements are character vectors and then they specify like what you want to loop through. And so as an example, let me look over here. Um, here I'm saying like, I'm specifying that list um, for loops. And I'm saying one of them is gonna be region and it has two options, DLPFC and hippocampus. And another option is gonna be feature and it's gonna have like gene, exon, transcript or junction. And so what does this do? This is, this is a bit of a wrapper for creating a shell script and then creates more shell scripts. So like, it's a bit of going on, a, on an inception type of thing um, because we use an R script to create a bash script. That bash script is gonna create like in this case, eight different uh, more bash scripts later on. And so the bash script here, uh, when we specify our name, in this case, I call it basic phase two underscore test, that will create this uh, shell script. And at the beginning of it, I just put a little like helper, how do you could actually run it with like sh space, um, the name of it dot sh, right? It will automatically create the log directory for you. And then what we, you know, what we saw earlier about the loops, it becomes now nested for loops uh, inside of your um, inside of your shell script. So here we're looping through region, which that was the first option we specified over here. And then inside of region, we're, we're gonna look through a variable called feature, which is the one we specified over here earlier, right? Um, 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 and then all our options here become like, Valid for that for loop in, in shell syntax. Um, automatically, we're going to create a script name, which is based on our global name. Uh, like, there's too many errors now. Um, it's based on our global name. And then we just append under after it the um, region and then the feature, which were like the two variable names for our set of options. Um, so uh, once we have that, it's actually gonna create a little hidden shell script. And it's hidden because the file name for it starts with a dot. Um, so that's why it's hidden. Um, you could ignore the, like, the um, hidden shell scripts um, and you won't see them on, on with like ls, the ls command on the terminal, unless you use the dash a option for showing all files. Um, um, so you don't necessarily need a version control them, although you can if you want. And so um, it's going to create that shell script, and here is going to use what's called the cat command on in in. Um, in um, in Bash, which is for like writing to, uh, I mean writing something, and because we're using the greater than symbol, it's going to write into that particular file. And when is it going to know that it's that it has ended? That's where we have this um, um, lower than twice, and then there's this particular key acronym called EOF, which stands for end of file. Um, and of the file. 
طيب اي سو ا ذس بيكمز ا ليت مور ا ليت بي مور كومبلكس ان تيرمز اوف هاو يو يوز يور ام يور ام فيريبلز اون باش اند ذس بيكوز ام يور ناو when you execute this script um you want to have some variable names so for example here we're using the short variable right for specifying the name of the script and the information for the log files but then there's some other environment variables that you don't want to execute in that moment such as the user environment variable and so the way that we delay the execution of it is by escaping the dollar sign and you escape it with this uh, inverse diagonal. Um, and so uh, it will look a little bit complex in that sense, but um, 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 but like once you execute it, like the, the new shell scripts that get created by this one will not have that like an inverse diagonal. And so that means that later on, that information will be used when you queue up. Um, and so the rest of it is uh, kind of similar. And then at the end, we have this EOF keyword for specifying. That's where our, um, our cat command ends. Um, and then here at the end, I'm just saying like, okay, like what are we calling, right? We're queue subbing that hidden script, the dot short name dot sh. I print the call so you can see the q sub command and then I execute it. And then we had two for loops. So then we have to finish those, each of those for loops with the work done, right? Um, and so like this example is the combination of um, a script that creates these loops, but also with the array job, so task ID 10. Um, and so we'll notice here how it's escaping the dollar sign for task ID. Um, it adds the dash T option, dash TC, right? Which are the um, uh, task options. Um, and that's basically the only change that happens at that point. Now, um, how do you actually then use that information well, that leads to a package called, um, um, uh, you could use a package called, um, mm -hmm. um, you can use a package called get up for get options. Um, there's other ways of doing this, but if you use this get up R package, you can specify a set of parameters. So here I'm saying like, this one has a parameter called SP file. Um, uh, the abbreviation for it will be S. It, I actually need it, so that's why I have a zero here. It's gonna be a type of character. And the description for it is this like file name. Um, you specify that set of matrices uh, of options. And then once it's executed, you use the get off function. You can save it into an object. Here we call it OPT for options. Um, uh, if, uh, if someone asks for help, then you will print the information for it and quit. And so how can you use this is like later on here, for example, I'm saying like, okay, I, I want this option and we call it SPE file over here in line 28. Um, and if it's something I'll do, you know, here I have a new files on my R code, right? Um, so this, you could argue like, okay, this is a very simple scenario where like we could have um, used it as an array job instead of um, what I have over here. Um, this is not necessarily, I don't necessarily need to loop two things here, um, um, but that's how you could use it. And so if I go to the shell script um, that, that is a companion for it, um, when I actually run it uh, here in line 44, I'm gonna call our script, the name of it, dash esh, because that's a 
short name for the option that was specified earlier, and then the file name, right? So this is how you can, now that you're looping, you can combine it with like library get up and actually pass those parameters to your R script instead of using the, uh, um, uh, the uh, C, C is not get env environment variable um, if you want it. Um, so that's one case. Um, um, and let me let me show you an example that combines both. So we're going to look at the next script. So this next script basically has the same um, options of so specifying an SPE file, but later on, we also um, get a task ID. Um, and so that means that um, uh, we're looping through, we have a for loop over here for the option SPE file, there's two values for it. Um, but then we are also running an array job later on. Um, so um, this becomes, um, like this is a more complicated scenario that I have for you, where like we're looping through a variable and in each case we wanna run um, an array job, right? So, uh, um, that's like saying like, okay, we have multiple scenarios where we want to run this, this table of, op, of parameters, right? Um, you could have just made it longer, right? And had a single array job that now has another column, right? Um, so that's, that could have been an option if you wanted to. Um, 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 I kind of like it this way because um, for example, that's what is actually running over here. Um, um, and so, well, you can't really see the names, but, oh, well, I mean, uh, we can I think you can. I like this because my, my shell scripts, instead of, um, 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 uh, like I actually have this name, right? Or like I call it like either whole genome or targeted, um, and so for me that helps me like uh, with like looking at the log files more easily and understanding what you know what is running, what is still queued, etc. Um, otherwise, it would have just been numbers at the end, right? And so then I would have had to know that like number twenty five is like um, um, you know my first scenario for the target one. Stuff like that, right? Um, so, whichever you know you feel more comfortable with, with there's you know ways you can uh, write the code for it. Um, and the only thing that gets a bit more complicated is the scenario for the whole Jade ID, right? And so, um, the previous script, um, preprocess and harmony, right? That made um, a job file name called preprocess and harmony underscore, and then the name of the SPE file. Uh, so that was the name that I gave it to it before. Um, and uh, um, if I want now the different jobs to hold for their corresponding part, right? So like on the right side, I have, uh, I want to run it for whole genome and targeted um, sequencing. Um, and I want the whole genome to just wait for whole genome on the left, right? For the preprocess and harmony on whole genome. I don't want it to wait for both preprocess and harmony on whole genome and also um, um, targeted. So then I need to like extend uh, what, is, um, what is the name that I'm waiting for, right? Um, so I actually had to write a bit of, um, of code for that. Um, and I realized I could have 
maybe made my life simpler by like not looping through SP file, but just looping through through like whether it was like whole genome or targeted. Right? And that would have made it easy for me to use the same variable name in both both of them and just say like wait for underscore the variable that I'm looping through, right? Instead of having to find like the map how this SP harmony whole genome translates to this uh, previous uh, job name SP post QC, right? Um, and so this is because like when I had like, um, yeah, I could have done it a little, bit, a little bit cleaner than I did. But the idea is now like um, each um, job is waiting for its corresponding earlier job. Um, the nice thing about all of this is that I wrote a single R script that can function for um, uh, 14 times two, 28 different scenarios, right? Um, so I didn't have to write like 24 different R scripts. Um, I didn't have to copy paste a lot of things, right? Um, um, and so I think that's, that's what motivates doing all of this, right? Um, to make, to reduce code duplication, to reduce the chances of copy paste errors overall, right? Um, um, and so this is particularly useful if you're, like in our case, exploring a, a given algorithm, but then exploring it for different input options, right? Um, um, or uh, also in this particular case, we have two very similar data sets where we want to run the, the exact same type of analysis, right? So instead of writing like, hey, analysis for data set one uh, dot R, analysis for data set two dot R, I only wrote a single R, R script for both. Um, oh, so, uh, you know, in order to get to this point, right, you, you need to understand, like, you know, have used like JHPC for a, for a while, right? Like, uh, see the value of like avoiding how to, you know, copy paste and all this stuff, right? Um, and um, um, yeah, it's particularly useful if um, you want to run the um, the same exact like analysis code for multiple inputs, right? Um, another another example for you would be uh, like for example, uh, this scenario. Eh? This scenario, which is just an array job, one to 30, um, we made this shell script with SGE jobs. So it's not a loop one. Um, but then I say like, hey, uh, from this input text file, space ranger parameters, um, get me um, the input for a particular line, where I'm here, you can see I'm using the SGE task ID environment variable and I'm using awk to extract that particular line. And then I want different columns, column one, two, three, four, five, six. And that specifies six different input options uh, that I then use for running uh, Space Ranger. And so the right here shows that like that particular table for like the first column was the um, sample name. Second column is this thing called the slide. Uh, Third column is called what's called the capture area. Um, and then the fourth column is a path to a particular file, uh, which is an image, a .tiff. The fifth column is a path to another file, which is a JSON file. Um, and then the sixth column is a path to like FASTQ files. And it could be actually a comma separated one. You have more than one location for the input FASTQs. And so this is something that like I taught Hina how to do now. Um, 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 and it can be 
useful for like having a single script for for running Space Ranger. Um, otherwise, uh, you might do something like what um, you know the people have done over here, which is like write um, write a shell script where like you copy paste the exact same code, right? for two different samples, but then you need to change all those six input uh, um, values. And that is like a lot of copy pasting and it can easily lead to two to, to errors, right? Um, um, I mean, we all make typos and things like that, right? So um, um, I, I, I end up using the, all of these tools to help protect myself from my own typos. Yeah, uh, you could you could also just use a while loop for that in Bash. Yeah, you could. Yeah, but uh, but if you do that, then you're gonna be waiting for sample one to finish processing before sample two runs, right? Yeah, uh, but that's I'm just saying because that particular one is uh, is is uh, is in series anyway. So if you wanted to, if your specific question was to reduce error between multiple and it's already in series, then just swap it out with a while loop. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can extract this and have a while loop to create your 30 shell scripts, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's always a lot of options. And, and I think if you're considering something more ambitious, then you could end up using Nextflow, right? Or, or things like that. Um, uh, like next slow at that point is like particularly useful if you want your code to be able to run in multiple compute environments, uh, um, which might or might not be the case. Cool. So um, yeah, I hope you uh, I hope you found this useful. Um, and I know that I showed a few like. Uh, um, uh, hidden links right now, but like all this code will be made public at some point, hopefully this year. Um, uh, cool. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to show you actual real examples of where we're, where we're using all of this. Um, um, I guess if you wanted to see like, uh, like how you can take all of this to the extreme. Here's, for example, like the earlier version of Speakeasy, um, where now it's almost like what I said earlier, but now this actually uses another package called GetUp, um, which is um, is not an R package at this point. This is a bash, <laughs> uh, a bash command. Like specifying all those options, um, setting a bunch of parameters, and eventually making all the shell scripts. Um, and you'll notice here, like the whole JID is set dynamically to wait for a particular experiment with a particular prefix. And there's a lot of like escaping things and um, you know setting the right environment variables. Uh, so this was like. You know this whole idea of like using awk to specific to get a particular line of input. There's a bunch of different cases with if else. So this is like you want to take it to the extreme. <laughs> um, these ideas, right? Um, but like um, this was highly customized to how like SunGrid engine works and JHPC, right? Um, um, so you want, that's why we ended up writing the next little version. Um, so, but yeah, you can see here, like, how about, like, we made like, like nine or 10 steps that are linked to each other. And we have a single, um, a single script that like queues up a lot of them, right? Uh, uh, so we'll run them all and like queues up them in order. And, and, and create like the, the relationship between all of them. So that was like much more complex than, 
than what I showed you today. But like, um, if I were to do it this again, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I would like immediately jump to next flow or snake mate or something like that. Right. Cool. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that's it. I'm gonna stop recording.